Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. This is our last presentation of a series on elasticity. As background, around 2003, the Australian mining industry was not looking good. World commodity prices for coal and iron ore, two of the main commodities produced by Australian miners, were low. Mines were firing workers, and some mines were closing down. Then around 2004, something changed. That something was called China. China had been growing rapidly for about a decade, but China was a traditional producer of iron ore and coal. So traditionally, Chinese miners had competed with Australian miners. But around 2004, the Chinese economy reached a size where it could not produce all the iron ore and coal that it needed. So it started to import the products from overseas. And with the Chinese economy growing at around 12% per year and having a billion people pushing demand for iron ore and coal to the right had a big effect on prices. In this presentation we want to see what economics predicts about such a change in demand for iron ore in the short and long term. And then we want to see how accurate our predictions are. So we're going to look at the iron ore market. On the horizontal axis we have quantity and on the vertical axis we have price. We're going to start at our initial equilibrium around the beginning of 2004, the end of 2003. We have the demand for iron ore originally and we have our short run supply curve for iron ore. The initial price is given by P0 and the quantity of iron ore traded is given by Q0. Then in 2004, growth in the Chinese economy shifts the demand for iron ore out to the right. It goes from demand curve D0 to demand curve D1. The short run effect is a big increase in price and a relatively small change in the quantity of iron ore traded. Why? Well, that reflects that our short run supply curve for iron ore is pretty steep. It takes a long time to start a new iron ore mine. It takes probably five to seven years. Indeed, if you include exploration to find new iron ore deposits, it can take even longer. So in the short run, and the short run here is probably five or six years, price is going to go up significantly, but there's not going to be a big change in the quantity of iron ore traded on the world market. But over time, mines adjust. Existing mines are able to increase their output. New mines are able to be developed and brought online. And so in the longer term, our supply curve is going to be much more elastic or flatter. That's represented by the dotted line here on our demand and supply curve. Again, remember, it goes through our original equilibrium because if nothing had changed, nothing would have happened in the short run or in the long run. However, the price has gone up and we want to ask, what has that done to the change in quantity in the long run? So, now on this diagram, we have a long run supply curve and we're looking at the equilibrium between long run supply and our new demand D1. And notice that that gives a price of PLR and a quantity of QLR. Some things to note, well, the price rise in the long run is not nearly as big as the price rise in the short run. PLR is smaller or below PSR. However, our quantity change in the long run is much bigger than our quantity change in the short run. So now we can make our predictions. In the short run, we predict that the increase in demand for iron ore from China will lead to a big increase in price of iron ore on the world market, but a relatively small change in the amount of iron ore traded. However, in the longer term, we expect to see the price of iron ore come back down again, not come back all the way to the original price level, but come back a fair way down to PLR, and we expect to see a big increase in the amount of production and iron ore traded on the world market. So, 
In summary, our predictions are that a boom, or an increase in demand, for iron ore will initially push up the price with a small rise in output. The higher price will encourage investment in iron ore mines, so that in the longer term the price of iron ore partly falls back but the quantity of iron ore traded rises even further. How do our predictions stack up against reality? Really, really well. This slide summarises exactly what happened in Australia and around the world with regards to iron ore and coal prices between 2004 and 2014. There was a big global downturn that affected Europe and the United States of America in 2008. But that was still the short run for Australia. It was four years after the boom had started and Australia had almost no downturn whatsoever because the price of iron ore and coal, two of Australia's biggest export industries, that price was still very high. But as new coal and iron ore started to be produced around the world, in Australia, Brazil, Russia, Canada and so on, the price started coming back down again, but the quantity of iron ore and coal being traded from Australia and being traded around the world was still much higher. So by about 2014, the price of iron ore and coal had come significantly back, but Australia was selling a lot more iron ore and coal than it was selling in 2004. So the short run here was about five years, the long run was about a decade. And about our economic predictions, they are spot on. Talk to you next time.